So Ken, you've had a chance to spend actually a couple days with this brand new uh, Yamaha Star Venture. I got to spend the same amount of time down in Nashville recently. And I have to say that uh, we were riding through some pretty inclement weather and we were logging a lot of miles. And this was a great vehicle for that. It was super smooth. What was your impression? Just your overall impression? You know what, when I sat on it uh, and closed my eyes for a minute, ergonomically, the handlebars, the feet, the seating position, I said, I'm on a cruiser. Then you open up your eyes and somebody put an entire touring machine underneath it. Yeah. So it's a touring machine for those that love the V-twin cruiser, Jean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it certainly has a big V-twin and it loves to lope along. Lots of torque, eh? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's amazing. Like I say, I'm used to more uh, multi-cylinder engines. And when this one's just getting in its stride for me, the, the rev limiter kicks in. Uh, yeah. 4750 is the red line. Yeah. People that are into V-twins would, would be used to that. But, I just thought that was a little early, but yeah, it pulls and, and moves out. And it really, uh, it pulls like a locomotive, but it's still smooth. And then I, there's got this really nice sort of chuck to it. Well, you know, for stock sound system, I thought it had a lot of character. I don't think it's obnoxious at all, yeah. um, but it's something that I'm not quite used to all the time. So I loved the sound of it. And it lets you know when you crank it on that there's a lot of throatiness to it in its stock configuration. And then we've got the uh, the heel toe shifter. That's an option, right? You said there were a few options on the bike. Yes, on this one I found is the billeted uh, heel toe shifter um, from Yamaha on this side. They also have the billeted brake pedal uh, on, on that side. These are massive floorboards, so it yeah. gives you a lot of room to move your feet around, yeah. which helps with uh, long distance riding to be able to change that position. This bike addresses a very low seat height for people straight to the ground oh, yeah. that might want a big bike, yeah. but might be vertically challenged. Yeah, it's obviously a big motorcycle. There's a lot of weight to it. It's a lot of that weight is down low. I found that the handling of it was a lot of fun. Like we were doing a lot of mountain riding and it was great. Yeah, I mean, it's it's like the other bikes that it's, it's, it's aimed at for a touring bike. This thing is 960, 970 pounds. Yeah. Yet it, uh, it handles very nicely. Yeah, I touched on a couple of corners. They were a little aggressive, but uh, it handles them very, very well for its weight. Comfort wise, we talked about the low saddle. It's a comfortable saddle. It's adjustable. Mm -hmm. The roominess of the floorboards, the reach of the bars. Then we've got the fairing and everything else that goes with that. I, again, I just found for, for uh, touring comfort and weather protection, I felt great. I was in a bubble. How about you for just overall comfort? I found myself maybe being a little bit on the tall end. I'm six foot and I was clearly seeing over the windshield in the down position, which it is right now. Mm -hmm. When it's in the up position, uh, the only time I would find that for myself might be on an interstate just to take that rain off of my shield. As far as the airflow, it didn't change a lot for me at six foot, mm -hmm. so I much preferred it in the down position. Right. Uh, however, these side vents, again, from uh, Yamaha as an accessory, incredible scoops of fresh air because any big V-twin puts out lots and lots of heat. I kept thinking I had bumped the heated seat switch on sometimes when you're in uh, stop and go traffic. So. Yeah. Yeah, those vents are worth their weight in gold to scoop that fresh air around that engine. How did you like the cockpit layout, the instrumentation, all the, the mirrors? I, that, to me, was impressive. They're big mirrors. They are. They're big mirrors, and in the touring, in the touring uh, genre, these bikes need to have solid mirrors. Yeah. And yeah, they're, they're right positioned right, just in the bottom end of the mirror when you're set up right. You just see the top of your knuckles for a reference mm -hmm. uh, for how far behind you're looking, and they gave great view, no distortion whatsoever. So let's talk about the final piece. You know, these things have to look good. Um, you got to look when you're good when you're out on the road. It's, it's got its own unique style. I, I, out riding, a number of people were caught off guard as to what it was. The lighting system on this thing, absolutely incredible. LEDs, that whole uh, shark nose on there with the LEDs and the lights down below. LED lighting for your turn indicators on the back of the mirrors. Incredible light display. On the back, everything's all LED back here. Yeah. And very, very noticeable. Um, but yeah, you're, you're right. The character of it just screams V-twin uh, touring bike. Yeah. Uh, anything you didn't like? 
Um, I, I would say it's just uh, the infotainment system, but that just takes getting used to because every vehicle, even in cars today, there's no standard to the information they can provide. Right. So there's a separate booklet on it that's as thick as the owner's manual. Yeah. And to really benefit from it without becoming uh, consumed by it, uh, it, it takes a little bit of studying and playing to do. But other than that, uh, the controls were where I expected them to be. And for a V-twin, incredibly smooth. Excellent. Well, you know what? You did this road test well. You really did your home homework. Thank, thank you. you, Ken. Well, thank you. What a pleasure.